Hello, listeners. Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network. And I want to take just a moment to tell you about another show on our podcast network that I co-host called Higher Ed Pulse. Higher Ed Pulse is your weekly spotlight on the latest in higher education marketing and enrollment. From headline news to social posts, insider insights to industry observations, join yours truly and Seth O'Dell as we share top stories from across the world of higher education. Each bite-sized 15-minute episode is packed with personality and designed to bring what's top of mind to the top of your feed. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or just search Higher Ed Pulse wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Visionary Voices, the College President's Playbook, a podcast that serves as your backstage pass to an uplifting and positive view into the collaborative playbook of higher education presidents and their senior leaders. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Gross. Join me weekly for discussions with some of the best minds in higher education leadership. From presidents to provosts, enrollment managers to CFOs, CIOs to chief diversity officers, this show is your ticket to the most future-forward strategies that are impacting real results on college campuses today. Each week, I will be posting highlights and insights from our show. So let's connect. Visionary Voices is part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at Enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites linked in the show notes below. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Learn more at Element451.com. Welcome, audience, to a very special episode of Visionary Voices. I have a dynamic president and vice president for student affairs uh, with me from Central Wyoming College. I want to welcome President Brad Tyndall and vice president of student affairs, uh, Corey Daly, to the show. Welcome, and thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. I really want to dive right in. Central Wyoming College has a designation as a Native American-serving non-tribal institution. Um, I'd love for you to talk to me about that designation and specifically, how does it impact Central Wyoming's mission and approach to student success? I was just going to say being a Native American serving non-tribal institution is an honor. We are very proud of this because we have two tribes that we serve here and they don't have a tribal college. They've been working toward one. They haven't been able to have one. So we're really proud to step into that space and serve their higher education needs. We're very remote. This is an education desert. So it's really important for us to be able to serve them to the highest capacity. Really amazing. I I noticed uh, you have a bachelor's degree in tribal leadership. Can you talk to me a little bit about how that degree came about uh, within the context of that mission? We serve two tribes, the Eastern Shoshone and the Northern Arapaho. They made efforts at a tribal college and they do some non-credit classes when they can, and they're a great partner with that. But really so critical for our tribes and probably for many other tribes is really um, economic development. And in kind of in the grand scheme of things, people will talk about of any developing nation, and that's the great way to think of it. There's challenges that come through, as you can imagine with any country, you know, governance, uh, legal issues, land tenure, it's so many complicated to understand from treaties to basic Indian law. There's just so much to it. And so we hit very, very hard, what I would call from the Western mindset is leadership development, but, and how, how the tribes that speak about it would be, you know, finding your place in, in your, in society. And so anyhow, so we've hit really, really hard, this concept of kind of future leaders. And so one of the, well, actually the first bachelor's degree was really driven from the tribes. And so when we became a four-year community college, frankly, it was because the tribes needed us to. And so it was really a response to our community. So the degree that we have is a Bachelor's of Applied Science, which is very much within the bailiwick of community colleges doing, you know, 
AASs, and this is a BAS, in organizational management and leadership with a specialty in tribal leadership. So they learn really what is necessary to be a great leader for the reservation. And so that was really the first program um, out of the gate. And so this designation as a Native American serving institution helped us to get resources to really to, to deliver this and even more. I'd love to dive a little bit into student success. So you do have uh, diverse groups of students. You talked about your Native American students. Corey, can you talk to me about what are some initiatives that you have at Central Wyoming College to support student success, retention, graduation, and just general happiness on campus? It's difficult for me to come back, come up with a list because we're constantly coming up with new things. This is a really a vibrant campus with lots of ideas. So with the Nisanti designation, we were able to get a grant that helps us support some of these efforts. And so with that, we have launched CWC Wind River. So we're able to have an outreach center on the reservation that is staffed during the week. So there are students because we are so remote, students transportation is a big issue. So in order for students to not have to come the 40, 50 miles that they may have to drive to get to campus, they can get support services right there where they live. So that's been really important. We also added an American Indian Student Success Coordinator, whose job it is specifically, I, I refer to her sometimes as a mother hen, uh, just trying to make sure that she is supporting the students. You know, one of the things that we hear so clearly from the research is that students need to see someone like them in a position of power in education so they can feel trust and belonging and then therefore they feel more safe to go into the classroom and learn. So that's been really important for our students is to have this person who acts as a liaison, I would say, between their cultural norms and what they see in Western education. So she, her job is really important. But some of the other things that we've been able to add I'm really excited about is embedded tutoring. We've been able to place embedded tutors into our math classes. Math is a particular barrier for many, many students at community colleges that struggle with, you know, Academics in general, math seems to be the, the place where students tend to break. So we put a position of a peer tutor in the classroom. So that person is paid to be a liaison between the students and the faculty and help them understand the content. But what we're seeing is really fascinating. The students are more likely to seek out resources with this liaison position in place. So they're more likely to go to the faculty member. They're more likely to go to tutoring. They're more likely to participate in a study group with this position in place. You know, there's some new research showing the power of this peer mentorship that is um, really difficult to manipulate organically, and we're finding some real successes with this position, so we're pretty excited about that. But in addition, we have all sorts of the things that most community colleges have. You know, we have food pantries and tutoring centers and counseling centers and, and career services and all those things. One thing that we launched this semester that we're pretty excited about is an online mental health platform that allows our students not just to have access to one-to-one -to -one therapy sessions because you know as we're seeing across the country here as well mental health is such a crisis and so we need our students to have access whether they're an on-campus student or not. So we want to make sure that our students, wherever they are, have access to therapy. But this system also, the one we chose, also has a lot of wellness. So it's really holistically looking at this student's well-being and giving them tips and tricks regardless of where they are, whether it's financial or yoga and mindfulness, that will help them just feel less anxious, less depressed, and, and be able to maintain the momentum because it does feel like in some ways mentally college has become a bigger lift in the last couple of years. So much there to unpack. Really impressive. I think about the fact that the student journey, as we know, is so nonlinear, but at Central Wyoming College, you're providing all of these opportunities for students to go through their journey and uh, utilize these resources as it makes sense for them uh, in a time that makes sense for them. Uh, I'm really interested in the success net uh, innovation. Could you talk a little bit more about that? 
Sure, we had a project um, as part of AFIT. We went together for the Alliance for Innovation and Transformation as a team. And so there were about 10 of us that went together and they asked us to come up with a project that would be innovative and transformational for our students. And so in the theme for a lot of the sessions that year was around artificial intelligence and what can that kind of technology do for our students. So we really started dreaming about what it would look like if some kind of a system would know, you know, how much is my bill? When do classes start? Is there somewhere I could text to get that information? Or when, does, when is my first class? When is my next paper due? So that the students could feel more empowered through their processes. So we really had fun dreaming up what this new era of higher education could look like with these pieces in place. So we presented our project and called it SuccessNet and it was really about building momentum and sealing those pipelines. So it's taking, it's playing off the term safety net and, and thinking about safety as the first layer of building towards success. And what we ended up with is the first step in our project is to launch a web bot that also has a texting capacity in it so that we can reach out to students that we have a hard time communicating with. That's been another national conversation about how hard it is to reach students and get feedback from them. And we're really excited because texting is the what the platform where everyone is to be able to provide these nudges and interactive nudges so they can ask those kinds of questions, you know, when is my next class, who is my advisor, those kinds of questions will be available to them, but also it can ask, we can reach out to them and say, how are you doing, do you have your books, those kinds of questions, and then they can respond and we can in real time get back to those students and let them know how we can help and really increase that resource seeking behavior and close that safety net. You know, I'm really interested in one, what you just said, you know, how you're using AI and advanced technology to complement, you know, all these other pieces, but you got my attention with AFIT. You're now the second college on this show that is a member of AFIT. Uh, a few episodes ago, we had Dr. Sunam uh, Beaton Garcia from Chippewa Valley Technical College. I, I would love to know a little bit more about how you get involved with AFIT. I don't like to say so, but it, they they used to be called Sequin, the the Network for Continuous Quality um, Improvement the Network, and uh, and then it, but they transformed. They realized that, and I was you know, kind of part of that process. I had started when I was with another school, and I was really impressed where groups of college leaders would bring teams of people who really want to think big. There's a lot of tweaking that goes on in higher ed. We think we're being innovative, but frankly, there's just a whole lot of tweaking. And I think even this group at one point said, let's stop thinking in terms of uh, continuous quality improvement, which Sequin was part of that movement, and say, no, we need to transform. These little tweaks by you know, assessing what you're doing and improving what you're doing is great and is necessary. But this group you know, made the decision to change their name, to change their focus, to really look at um, transformation, right? And say, what, let's shoot bigger. It, what we do as a community college sector is dealing with largely at risk people. And we can't just tweak. We have to think bigger. And I think as a sector, personally, I feel like one of the, the problems that we've had is that we think too small. We're just quote unquote community colleges or we're, you know, no, we can do anything and be anything we want to be. And so I, I very much like that. And my predecessor, the previous president was a member and I had been a member before and I said, let's do this. Let's think big. And I do think my one advice to people is always think bigger, think transformationally. If you tweak and you find it's a little bit better, it's like, no, because it's so hard when you're dealing with student success and it's kind of like the war on poverty if you don't think big and go big you'll get these incremental little changes and so what's nice about this group is they really swing towards the fence and it's a cohort of about i don't know about 20 schools they get together and they're all very serious about transformational changes innovation and transformation and a lot of thought on paradigms and how do you really get some major, you know, traction on things. And so it's a, it, I, that's a good group. And I think that, you know, it, 
forces teams to try to think bigger and to, to try big initiatives and saying, what would success really look like? I think those are words worth reiterating. We have members of our audience that are aspiring leaders, vice presidents and presidents, and that advice of thinking big, I don't think it matters whether you're a community college, a, you know, a four-year public, four-year private, with all the challenges and externalities that we have, I think all of us uh, can can benefit from that type of thinking. Um, we focus a lot on the show about collaboration. So as senior leaders, uh, your team, uh, President, President Jindal, how do you bring your leadership group together and uh, focus them on uh, collaborating around the many initiatives that we've uh, heard about? You know, it's really interesting. I think that in my mind, I think of initiatives almost in two ca categories. So when it comes to kind of the Native American space, and oftentimes a lot of the Native Americans in this area prefer to be called American Indians, by the way. So it kind of depends on what people like. And so when we support our American Indian population, we have two sovereign nations. And so when you have discussions there, you have to be so much more inclusive than you normally are. In higher ed, our, you know, we're, we're told and we, we believe that we're very collaborative than I think we are. But collaboration has to go on steroids when you're working with sovereign nations and different voices. One thing that Corey mentioned is that um, one of our employees, the kind of the mother hen position, serves also as a liaison. Our college, in fact, even has an official liaison, a separate kind of political person who's also very beloved and he's like everybody's uncle and he's been tried and true. He was elected official for 22 years, I think it was, and even the top position for his tribe, the business, his business council, as they call it. And bringing in the voice of the American Indians and really being a receptive listener and not like, I am not Native American, I'm not American Indian. And so I can't be just like this wise, you know, well-intentioned white guy is kind of you say that and cringe but there's a lot of us who really want to do well but the secret is to really super collaborate so what we did really is mr posey ivan posey brought in the americans for indian opportunity and we did these big kind of we i would say conference but it's really like a family gathering and they're you know passing the stick and and, and people everybody gets to speak their truth and their wisdom and they had a process that would dig down deeper into like core causes and they dug deeper. We talked about intergenerational trauma and a lot of talk on trauma. And, and at the end of the day, the big lesson was how are we going to transform things? And they said, basically it came down to family, the family unit and the college needs to be more like a family unit and behave like one and think like one. And so we provide family services. This is where Ivan and Rory, this mother hunt position and others really have to be like the auntie and uncle and create this whole environment. And so in the terms of the collaboration on this, it was a lot of listening. And there are times when there was an idea that was brought forward that we've implemented and it's called the Tribal Wisdom Society. And I said, oh, it's a leadership development program. And they go, no, that's a Western construct. This is not what we're talking about. So explain to me what we're talking about. And it was basically a discussion of, of building a sense of society where you feel safe and you find your role in the world. In traditional societies, you knew your job was to go get berries or to hunt or to, to fight or to clean or to move the, move the homestead or whatever it would be. It's finding your place in a, a, a tight-knit society. And so I go, huh. This is really hard to get my head around, but I trust you. I have to do this thing, build this tribal wisdom society, even though I have a hard time articulating it. And this is where you let people run. And there's a part of you that going like, I just have to trust the process and trust people. And it works. And sometimes it takes longer than I think because it's not the Western mindset. You have to get a lot of input from elders and you're thinking, when is this thing ever going to be launched? I th shouldn't this be launched in six weeks? No, three years later. It's built the right way, indigenized, as Ivan Posey, he has a shirt and he gave it to several one of us that has indigenize on it, like get it through your head, you know, it's different. So I think for us who work with native populations, we really have to say, I can't make that decision. 
we even this is this serious hunk of money that we give into Ivan and said, you spend it. And that's, I don't stand off on money like that much, but given the fact we're talking sovereign nations, I have to just let go. And I've had a couple elders tell me that saying, you need to let go. You need to make sure Ivan can spend that as he believes is necessary and going, Ooh, I like more string. No, but we have oversight. Don't get me wrong, but you really have to collaborate and listen and trust more within within that space. Hey, it's Mallory. Exciting news. I'm hosting the Engage Summit in Raleigh on June 25th and 26th, and I'd love to meet you there. Together, we'll dive into the mind of the modern student, what fires them up, how they interact, and what they expect in today's digital age, and how tools like AI help put them in the driver's seat of their education. We have some terrific speakers, including our closing keynote, New York Times bestselling author, Jeff Salingo. Sessions will dig into practical ideas and innovative strategies to get your team more student-centered and ready to adopt AI. And many of your favorite Enrollify hosts are presenting too, like Jamie Hunt, Jenny Lee Fowler, and Brian Gross. Use the discount code Enrollify50 for an extra $50 off your registration. Learn more and register at engage.element451.com. We can't wait to see you there. What a powerful piece, this idea of, of sometimes letting go as a leader. You know, one, one of the hardest but most impactful things that you can do. I'm, I'm hearing two things, you know, at a very high level. You know, both of you started off talking about a wide variety of initiatives to support student success, student belonging. And so I I get this clear idea of all this innovation, but then you, Brad, are talking about just the importance of listening and family and, uh, you know, respecting the culture. And as I just said, uh, letting go. So it, it must be a really challenging thing to balance both of those things, being a higher ed administrator myself. When I go to senior leadership meetings at Hartwick College, we're always looking at the data, driving numbers, and how's our retention trending, and how's our graduation trending? How do metrics come into all of this? How are you using data, you know, to both track what you're doing, but also obviously not overemphasizing it with everything we just heard Brad say about listening and family? We were seeing it prove out in the metrics where we have a SEM plan in place through strategic, strategic enrollment management. And obviously our American Indian student population is a, a key piece of what we're trying to affect here because of our DeSanti designation and because of our obligation to serve our population here. So what we're seeing is our native students are in graduating at increasing rates, they're retaining at increasing rates. We're seeing pretty much our their satisfactory academic progress is going well. They're re-enrolling. We're seeing improvements. Some of them are incremental. Some of them are staying a little bit flatter than we would like, but they're not going down. And for a while there, it really was a struggle because there is so much intergenerational trauma. There is so much poverty. There is so much fear around education from the history of boarding schools and all of those sorts of things. So one of the uh, innovations that we have added with Ivan's leadership, kind of coming from that listening space and coming from Americans for Indian Opportunity, was a required training. So all of our staff now have a training about reservation history and trying to understand that mindset. You know, one of the leadership principles that came out of a, another AFIT conference a few years ago was that you don't necessarily, as a leader, tell somebody how to see or what to see. You show them all of the pieces that you're seeing and help them connect the dots the same way that you are. So that's what we're trying to do with this training is give more people across our campus more context so they make their own good decisions based on better grounding in history and the realities of what our students are experiencing. So our, our faculty are very flexible. You know, when our Native students have a funeral, it, they could be out for a week or two versus a Western funeral, you're gone for an afternoon. So our faculty are learning that's normal and they have to figure out ways to allow that student to still be successful so they don't have to assimilate. That's one of the values that, we're, that I try to work toward is that you as a student don't have to leave your culture at the door. We want you to belong here and bring who you are into the process. Oh, 
I'm so honored to be having this conversation. I think as so many college and universities around the country are thinking about um, how they're going to impact diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Uh, what I'm hearing from the two of you, I mean, this is this is the real deal. You know, the these ideas. You know, show what you're seeing and help others connect the dots. I mean, that th that's really profound. And I I think there's so much that uh, people around the country, hopefully listening to this, could uh, think deeply about and reflect on. Um, I'd love to ask. We we hope to motivate and inspire you know future leaders on this on the show. Uh, I'd love to ask each of you. What advice would you give based on your own professional experiences to those that want to one day be in your seat? Corey, you're actually the first vice president for student affairs to be on the show. So congratulations. So perhaps future aspiring student affairs professionals and then aspiring president. So Corey, uh, professional advice. Brad hit the nail on the head, it is about listening. When in this context, it's about listening to what's going on with the students, what's going on in the environment, and, and thinking about the ecosystem in which you, which you exist. And how do you find a, a vision for whatever the next steps are? I think that um, paying attention and raising your hand, that's always been one of the leadership advices I like. You're at the table, you're part of the conversation, you're learning so much, it's inevitable that you're going to be of value in whatever the next layer of position might be for you. Really good advice. Uh, President Tyndall, what, what are your thoughts, advice? Well, in a nutshell, I would just say, think bigger, always bigger. But people say, what does that mean? I mean, how can you tell someone just to think bigger? And I said, one thing that I actually got out of an AFIT conference years ago was force yourself to kind of do a meta jump. And so I, I saw this, I learned this when a hospital foundation decided to stop supporting the hospital and instead support education. I said, what? You kind of threw away your mission? No, we took our mission to the next level. If we're really trying to help people, we have to think about, you know, sometimes it's like, wait a second, you're starting to ask yourself to step out of your mission and go broader because that's what it takes to, so you guys have to be more like moms and dads. That's not being teachers, Sage on the stage. Nope, we have to think of ourselves differently. And so part of it is think of a bigger designation. We actually transport food and somebody say, what is a community college transporting food for? I say, this is what our ecosystem needed. We move food around in terms of helping the local ag movement. And so there are times where you, you dare to think be a little bit more beyond your mission to serve your mission. What would it really take? Said, well, gosh darn it, no one else is doing that role. Maybe we should. And I know that's perilous. And some I've been at colleges where presidents had to shut down things because they said it was off mission. But I tend to think the opposite. I think my, I challenge people to say, Think what you really need to do. You can always shut stuff down, but thinking bigger, what would be okay. necessary for this whole ecosystem to work? And the other piece of advice was another idea I got actually from an AFIT conference was the concept of crowdsourcing, which really speaks to partnerships. If you want your students to succeed, you can't do everything. You can't provide the baby seats or maybe the health care or the COVID shots. And you're thinking, okay, we have to think of us as crowdsourcing with our staff internally, externally, all those partners, because you have to think holistically, because we are really kind of fighting the war on poverty in the community college sector. We're trying to train yeah. people and grow people out of poverty. We have to think of the whole ecosystem, as Corey said. And that means, oh man, partnerships on steroids, and that partner needs to succeed. You can't just say, well, that's not our job. They'll work on the whole mental health thing going, no. It's our business because if they don't have mental health, they don't succeed and our graduation rates aren't, aren't good enough. And so that would be a little bit of advice I'd provide. I think so many college and universities around the country are struggling with this fundamental notion of what makes us distinctive, what makes us unique. And I think there's so much that is distinctive, of course, about Central Wyoming College as a Native American serving non-tribal institution. You're innovating in ways that other institutions are thinking about it, but you're doing it in such an authentic way. And I think that word authenticity is something that we amongst our senior leadership talk about. And I, I hear so much of that in this conversation. And you got to put your money where your mouth is. We actually do have a whole set of funds and we do lots of pilots and put out money. And if the pilot did not work, we shut it down. 
and you really can't, if they don't have a kitty of money for doing pilots, they need one. Cause then you can be really honestly looking for ideas and knowing you have a pot of money. If, if you can pencil it out, like we're going to try something, then this is real. If it's all like, well, but there's no money to really do anything like then this isn't real. Yeah, higher ed is notorious for that, right? The the field of dreams phenomenon, right? If you build it, they'll start trotting out of the woods, you know, and everything will just happen by magic. But uh, I, I I like that notion. We always end every episode. Uh, we're building a playlist on Spotify, and uh, we're asking uh, all of our leaders to identify a song uh, that might best represent you know, the culture or the spirit of either their college or their senior leadership team, and. Uh, I'd love to give you a chance to add uh, to our playlist. So, uh, Brad, Corey, either of you have a song you want to uh, add to the playlist? It's new to us, but we, we're we rustlers. That's our college mascot. And so we set up a college values so that we, each one of the word, letters, R-U-S-T-L-E-S, R-U-S-T-L-E-S, is a value. And one of those core values is resilience. So we chose Resilient by Katy Perry. Oh, I love this. It has some great lines in there about, you know, breaking through the cracks, full flower, really metaphors for what we try to do at community colleges in general, but specifically what we try to do at CWC. We had a president for about 25 years who really liked to call us a scrappy college. So that the resilience is the new new scrappy that we get it done no matter what we, people like to say that we are wrestlers, that means that we steal cattle, which is not the case. What we do is we wrestle things up, we make something out of nothing and we make it happen. A big shout out to Katy Perry, who is now the first artist who has been on our playlist twice, uh, Cedar Crest College in uh, Pennsylvania identified war. So uh, Katy Perry will be uh, twice on the playlist. Um, President Tyndall, uh, Vice President Daly, I, I can't thank you both uh, enough for, for being on this podcast. This has been a really uh, terrific, interesting, and important conversation that I have no doubt our viewers will appreciate a great deal. Thank, thank you, Ryan. We appreciate it. Visionary Voices, the College President's Playbook is part of the Enrollified Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admission professionals find their next big ideas and feature a huge selection of the industry's best. As your hosts, learn from Artis Kadu, Jamie Hunt, Alice and Tercio, and so many more of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com.